that was a good chip. That's your Kamloops Dodge top play of the game. Guts, Glory, Ram, Schmiemann. Here's Zeri dancing into the goal. Backhand score! Valenti and Dimitri. Valenti goes outside, centered! Stopped! And now with a deflection off the skate, it stays there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the episode of Just Say Gway. I'm your host, George Gway. Today, I am joined by Dylan Garand and uh, Connor Zeri of the Kamloops Blazers, and they are expected to hear their names called in next week's draft. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, having for having us. Yeah, so I got to ask for both of you, um, how have you guys been? Because I know it's been pretty hectic for you guys with the draft and also the shutdown of play and uh, trying to get back into the swing of things. How have you guys been? Uh, I've been good uh, myself. Um, fairly normal off season for me, thankfully. Um, you know, I'm in a good spot here in, in BC where things haven't been too bad, and you know, I've been pretty busy, but uh, you know, making progress and you know, getting along with my off season. Yeah, same thing for me here. I'm in Saskatchewan. It hasn't been too bad, and uh, just been training and been on the ice. Same old kind of off season for me, just extended. Awesome. So uh, you guys must be really excited for the draft. But before we um, get into that, let's uh, backtrack a bit. So I got to ask for you two. Um, you guys are from different places. What was the hockey culture like growing up for you guys? I mean, most of my dad's side of the family, they're from Quebec. So I, I think I kind of understand it, how big of a deal um, hockey is and how much it's treasured in that part of Canada. But what was it like for you guys growing up? Yeah, uh, for me, it was kind of like just – Every winter, from what I can remember back to, obviously probably five, six years old is about as far back as I remember. But I just remember every every single winter having the outdoor rink in my backyard and then having the community outdoor rink just down the block. So every single morning, be on it. Every single time you come home from school, you'd be on it. Every weekend, you'd be on it. And if you weren't on it, you'd be inside watching Hockey Night in Canada or something like that. And uh, that's that's about my whole childhood. It was kind of based off of hockey and. That that's kind of how I grew up. Yeah, for me, it's kind of similar. Um, you know, I'm in Victoria, so no outdoor rinks here. But um, uh, yeah, for as far back as I can remember as well, just always playing hockey. You know, uh, like going to school and then right after going to practice and and stuff like that. Obviously, it wasn't as serious as it is now. And you know, I just remember, um, you know, that's kind of like the only fun thing that I did was play hockey, and it's kind of been what my whole life's based about. Yeah, so how did you guys both um, end up with the Kamloops uh, Blazers? How did they find you guys? Um, just through the Western League draft for me, I got drafted uh, by Kamloops in the third round, and uh, that's pretty much how I ended up there. Yeah, same same exact thing as, as Dylan. Just through the, through the draft, you, know, you come in as a prospect and put your best foot forward when you turn 16 and try and make the team. So I think that's about the same for both of us. That's a good answer. So I got to ask because I'm from the Northeast of the United States and college hockey is really big here. A lot of the top teams are here at Boston University, Boston College, Providence College, um, UMass Lowell. Was college ever an option for you guys? Did you think about it? Uh, for me personally, it, like, it was probably on the table, but I never really thought about it. It was always kind of Western. You know, I grew up in Saskatoon and as a kid, I'd always go to Saskatoon Blades games and always follow the WHL so that's where I always wanted to play and I don't think there was going to be really another option for me besides playing the WHL. Yeah for me um, you know I thought about it not too hard um, you know I'd always been kind of leaning towards the Western League and you know I think a, a big decision point was was the draft and you know depending on where I got drafted was going to be kind of where I based my decision off and you know I got picked by a great organization in Kamloops and um, you know just from there I kind of I decided to go to the Western League, and but I definitely thought about the other way. Um, you know, I think the different scenarios is Western League is kind of faster, and um, you know, you can kind of go in right away. Whereas, you know, if you kind of look at yourself and your development, and if you think that you're going to need more time, um, then maybe you play four years in junior and then go off to college for however many. So, um, I thought about it, but for me, I think Western League was always my favorite, and um, you know, I'm glad that I chose this way. Yeah, that makes sense, and it's clearly worked out for you guys. So you guys have been very successful in the Western League. Um, I got to ask, coming into it, were there any 
hard adjustments they needed to make or um, stuff they had to get used to before you were you know, really successful in that league? Uh, I think just kind of like every player goes through, um, you know, it's obviously faster and the guys are a lot bigger. Um, for me as a goalie, um, specifically guys shoot, you know, a lot harder and, um, you know, they can get the puck up uh, quicker. So definitely adjustments uh, that I have to make just like everyone else. But, um, you know, the more time you spend in practice and throughout the year, you just get, get accustomed to it and make those changes. And, you know, after, after two years, um, you know, it's been pretty steady. Yeah. And then same here. Like, yeah, obviously I think every, every single guy coming in has to adjust their game a bit. And I think for me coming at 16, obviously it was faster pace and, and it was a, it was a more physical game than what I was used to. But I think just trying to transition my game into making sure I was like a 200 foot player and making sure I was responsible on all area of the ice. I knew I had the skill part and I knew I still had the abilities to, to kind of put the puck in the net and make skilled plays. But I think it was, it was kind of, being versatile in the other areas of my game with uh, back checking and, and being right in the right position all over the ice is, is what kind of helped me kind of ease into it a little bit better. Okay, so I got to ask, um, for living in the United States, not, you know, for obviously for hockey kids dream about um, playing in the Olympics for their team and hockey more so than any other sport. I mean, I think some kids – don't really value the, the Olympics for basketball or the World Cup for soccer. So what was it like to put on uh, the Canadian jersey at one point and represent your country? Yeah, it's, it's obviously so special every time you get that opportunity to, to wear the Maple Leaf. And I think every single kid that grows up in Canada, I'd say one of the biggest ones would be the World Juniors, just seeing that on TV every Christmas time and you're on holidays away from school. And that's something I always look forward to watching myself. And I think is probably – even though it wasn't quite that event, it was it was U18s for me. But I think that's still one of the most special moments of, of my young kind of hockey career is being able to, to play for Team Canada and represent my country. Yeah, same goes uh, for me here. Um, I think, you know, the first time you do uh, put it on, it's, it's such a special feeling. And, uh, you know, not many kids get to do it. And, um, you know, to be fortunate enough to, you know, be selected to put it on and you know, play for not only yourself and your teammates, but for your whole country is, it's a pretty cool, uh, cool feeling. And, um, you know, it, it's pretty fun to, you know, play in those games and, you know, represent your country. Yeah. I got to say, Connor, it is awesome watching it um, around Christmas time. You know, I go up to Canada, to see my dad's family a lot and um, it's like their Super Bowl pretty much. Um, so I got to ask, you know, this was, Seven months ago, I know you guys probably don't remember much seven months ago like everyone else. Um, what was the shutdown like uh, for you guys? And how did you guys keep your skills or game you know, intact? Um, it was kind of kind of weird at first. I mean, we kind of got told that the season was going to be paused and then, you know, we got sent home. And, and honestly, I still believe that, you know, it wasn't going to get shut down. We we're going to get brought back. And then, you know, three weeks later they did a uh, – they did cancel the season. So pretty disappointing considering the, you know, the special group that we had and, you know, the position we were in. And, you know, I think we all believe that we could have, you know, made a real run at a championship and, you know, it's disappointing on that end. Um, but, you know, right. I think it was important to kind of switch focus right away. And, you know, obviously the season's canceled, so you're not going to get it back. So kind of shift focus and, you know, try to get better for next year. Yeah, I was I was kind of the same as Dylan. I think it was kind of a shock when it all kind of came apart and got canceled, and it, it sucked for a bit. I think what Dylan said, we had such a good team in Kamloops and probably a chance to to win it all that uh, last year. But I think after it passed by a bit, and like Dylan said, we weren't getting that season back. It kind of shifted my focus too. That's kind of in the past. You can't control what happened now. It's it's all about what's going on in the future and and what you can do to to make yourself better. So. It's kind of what I focused on. Yeah, I mean, from what I remember, I mean, I know I'm not a hockey player, but I remember at school um, for the Hockey East tournament, which is the conference tournament that all the top schools in the East, the Northeast, compete in. They said for at one hour there'd be no fans at all, and they could still play. And then about half an hour later, they said, you know, we're not going to do this at all. But um, so I got to ask, um, this is not a typical draft process for you guys. Um, how did the coronavirus impact your 
draft process? Like, what did you guys do during this time regarding the draft? Yeah, obviously it, it was a bit different. You know, there was there was no combine, so there was none of that. No, no in in person interviews. No, no fitness testing there. So that was a lot different. And then we kind of it was just a waiting game to kind of see when the draft would actually be. You know, they were talking about virtual in the end of June still, and virtual before the season. Or and then they finally decided that it was going to be after they finished everything and, and now it's October 6th. So it was obviously a di- bit, bit different doing Zoom interviews with, with all the teams and, and, and talk to them virtually. And uh, it'll be a lot different come draft day that you're not actually in, a, in an arena getting your name called and, and going down there and meeting with your new team. But I think no matter what way you look at it, it'll be special for, for yourself and your family and, and everything that kind of goes into that whole process. It'll, it'll still be the same being, being at home with my family and my parents. Yeah, same, pretty much same, same answer as Connor. Don't got much to change from that. Um, obviously different because uh, we haven't had the chance to go to the combine and had those in-person interviews like Connor said. But, um, you know, I think scouts included, we all, we've all had to adapt and, you know, get used to the phone calls and the Zoom calls. So, um, you know, I think when the day comes, uh, it's going to be a pretty special moment regardless. Yeah, it's a great way to look at it. And I totally agree um, with you guys. But, what are the emotions like going into these last few days or, you know, this past week? Have, have they been changing? Have you guys felt the same way or um, how are you guys handling all this? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, every day, every, every night you go to bed and wake up, uh, you're just one day closer and, um, you know, kind of been waiting for it for your whole life. And now the time's finally here. It's, it's pretty exciting. The closer that we get, um, it's still important to, keep focused and being in the moment on, you know, what you're doing that day. But, um, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting to think about it uh, now that's here. Yeah. I'd say the same thing, a little bit of nervous excitement, but, but mostly excitement just, just uh, it felt like such a long wait and it's kind of, even last week it still, still felt so far away, but now that it's a few days away, three days away, it's, it's, uh, it's getting pretty exciting and it, it should be a pretty special moment. Yeah, so I got to ask you guys, um, what's it like just, you know, sharing it with each other? You know, there's a possibility you guys could get picked by the same team uh, and your journey could continue together. Have you thought of that? Yeah, obviously, that'd be pretty cool uh, being selected by the same team. I know the odds aren't going to be 100% there that that's going to happen. But if it were to happen, that'd be pretty special to to go in with Dylan. You know, we've played together for the last two years and, and he's an unreal goaltender and and one of the best goalies I've ever played with. So, so it'd be pretty special to be be with someone like him. Yeah, I thought about that too. I think it would be super cool to be drafted by the same team. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to be playing on a different team than Connor, that's for sure. And, um, you know, the odds are, like Connor said, not there. Uh, not with us for that. But um, if it does happen, that'd be super cool and uh, I'd be super happy about it. Yeah, so this is the last question, probably the hardest question, but – um, on your calls, if the question was asked, why should a team draft you? What are you going to do to be a difference maker when you step foot um, in that NHL locker room uh, or even that uh, development camp? Uh, for me, I think, you know, I'm, I strongly believe in myself that, uh, you know, whatever team drafts me, I can win them a Stanley Cup. Um, you know, I think I'm a goalie who, um, you know, wants to win and, you know, I want to be a winner. So, I'm going to do whatever it takes to to make sure that happens and I won't rest until I do. So, um, you know, I think whatever team picks me is going to make a great pick um, and just can't wait to see which team that is. Yeah. And then I'd say for me, I just like, when I step in that dressing room, I want to be the hardest working guy and I want to be the best version of myself I can be. So I think what Dylan said, obviously that's, that's the end goal of, of any season is to win a championship and, and do whatever you can to help your team do that. And I think for me personally, it's, it's coming to the rink every day with a really good attitude and I know I can be a top player and wherever I am and make, make skill plays and, and help a team win. So I definitely think that's what I'd say. Yeah. Well, those are great answers and whatever team does select you, wherever you are, um, they're going to be very lucky to have you guys and uh, you'll be expecting a congratulations text from me. So guys enjoy the draft and uh, congrats to your dreams are going to come true next week. So thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.